What's going on, everybody? I'm Tom. I'm Pat. And I'm Zach. We're best friends, and you're listening to the Reminiscent Podcast. They say you can't choose your family. Well, you also can't choose which era of music you grew up in. This is a weekly show where we discuss our favorite bands from adolescence and how they continue to shape our lives today. Each week, we'll head back to the early 2000s and take a closer look at the cards we were dealt. Tom, I have terrible news. Oh, is everything okay? You've been stuck in a coma for 981 years. It's the year 3000. (laughs) Oh my God, what happened? Has anything changed? Not much has changed, except that we live underwater. (laughs) Oh my God, that's so strange. But uh, how is my great, great, great granddaughter? She's doing fine. Oh, good. (laughs) All the important things you want to know. Yes, we got it all covered. We're doing (laughs) probably the most newsworthy episode we've ever done. Welcome to the uh, the Jonas Brothers episode, man. <laughs> Specifically the year 3000. Music video. Yes, yes. And lyric breakdown. We'll get through it all. But I just want to start off to say that this song, all joking aside, is a motherfucking certifiable bop. And I won't budge on that. <laughs> I'm ready to just lay that take down and, and embrace it and totally be behind it. Do you remember like 2006 when this song came out? You and Zach were over at my house for, uh, we didn't call it band practice. We called it jamming. And, uh, right. and your aunt was there with her son. It was like during that period. Of yeah. Her, yeah. Probably junior. Yeah. This song came on. I was your sister watching the Disney channel. Cause it wouldn't have been on fuse, right? No. So we didn't have cable, but for some reason, AOL had this like weird channel, oh, yeah. which is the first time I heard Wonderwall by Cartel. <laughs> they just right. had like rant or, you know, you know Oasis, what? You used to play cover. that all the time because there was like, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> the Goo Goo Dolls played Iris in the rain at some concert. <laughs> I remember that AOL <laughs> channel. It was the most emotional <laughs> take on Iris I'd ever seen. And it was before, <laughs> it was after a sleepover and everyone had uh, was still sleeping. I used, that was like what like tortured me throughout my childhood was waking up hours before everyone else did on sleepovers. But I was just, for some reason it was like the Sunday morning replay. So it was playing the same stuff. So I probably got through three hours of the AOL loop that morning. And I saw that fucking Irish performance just in pouring rain. I love the Goo Goo Dolls or at least their hits. But anyway, that's probably what it was on. And uh, man, not, not a bad channel, all things considered. I just specifically, you guys walking in the door and just like so sheepishly being like, don't judge me for this, but you got to hear this song, the year 3000. (laughs) And we just jammed it like the rest of the day. I mean, it's, it was, it was good. It's undeniably just killer. It's it's no more, no less. Just a very fun. It's it's a fucking bop. It just is. And uh, I'd love to just, well, I want to ask this question. Before we get into this, because doing a little bit of research, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, well, yeah, it's, yeah, we'll call it. It was research. Um, I, I came up with a very interesting conundrum for you. Okay, um, who would win in a fight, the fourth Jonas brother or the third property brother? <laughs> um, <laughs> and might I say that the third property brother? Couldn't have more of a look of the era of this show (laughs) than any person (laughs) in the fucking world. Uh, He's got the best hair. I think I mentioned this on a previous episode, but I saw a meme that was like, why does the third property brother look like he's about to chime in and ask if uh, you've ever heard of closing the (laughs) damn door or whatever? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No hate at all. It's just like, man, good for you. Well, I think the fact that the fourth Jonas brother, or as uh, I, you know, I just learned right before the episode, some people refer to him as the bonus Jonas. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I think he's significantly younger. I, I you know, mm. here's another question. I don't see are them the Jonas at brothers, all. <laughs> and I'm actually actually asking this: Are they the least problematic musical act in the history of the world? <laughs> all I can think of is the South Park episode of that. Oh, I don't know if I've ever seen it. <laughs> so they're like on state, like it's the whole um, purity ring 
uh, episode and Mickey Mouse is like forcing them to like take these huge hoses and like spray all the girls on stage with this like these foam cannons. <laughs> like, uh, and uh, they refuse to do it. And Mickey's like, what? You're f-ing with the wrong mouse. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. You've had that Mickey Mouse impression in your arsenal for 115 <laughs> episodes and you haven't used it yet? What the f-? <laughs> oh, that was incredible. Uh, but well, I think we'll talk I think, about that on another day. I think to answer your question, though, I don't recall any controversy around them. Yeah, I don't. Other than some basic Disney Channel who's dating who drama, right? right? <laughs> there might have been uh, some Selena Gomez, Hannah Montana, innocent middle school uh, infighting over uh, Nicholas. Uh, the, the the most. Can we just say that he's the most handsome Jonas? Is that just a fact at this point? Well, you know, I was talking to my wife, Megan, before this, and she said that I think it was the middle one is apparently like the quote unquote hot one. And he's marrying like the girl from Game of Thrones or something. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I've never seen Game of Thrones. so I don't know who she's talking to, but or talking. Oh, man, I should look it up, but I'm just going to guess that it's the keyboard player and that he's. Yes. The one going for Sansa Stark, the actress who plays Sansa Stark, I'd imagine. Sophie (laughs) Turner, I believe. Okay. And good good for both of them. Couldn't sure. be happier. Yeah. Uh, and again, we can, we'll can we pull an armchair expert and fact check this episode maybe to make sure there hasn't been any crazy Jonas uh, uh, <laughs> troublemaking going on. But as far as I know, it's pretty easy to root for. And ex- what was the hit? Before we get into the music video, because we're about to do that right now, this has been a long intro, of course, but uh, it's very fun. Is this, is this the hit? Is, are there more no. than one hits? I can't remember. I can't associate them with any other riffs or, or lyrics or anything like that. Me neither. I mean, I knew that they were kind of omnipresent around 2008, eight, nine, but don't know a single song other than year 3000. <laughs> Which, again, as we've said, is, is worthy of examination. It's all- <laughs> um, so the whole, the whole basis, and I guess we're assuming that uh, it's a time travel song, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Based heavily around the notion that their neighbor has constructed a flux capacitor from the movie Back to the Future or the franchise, as as, as you may know. And uh, they go to the year 3000. And uh, I'm not sure if this is in the same universe, but in theory, they would have, if they've gone three, five years farther, perhaps they would have run into Childish Gambino still loving the girl he's singing to in the song 3005. We can only assume. Um, (laughs) But... Should we go frame by frame, lyric by lyric? What do you want to dive into first? Let's start with the music video. Okay, I'm in. It's, it starts off standard. The garage rock, people, you know, right? Yeah. Or no. Are they in the garage or does he like kiss his mom? Oh, he comes home from lunch, gives his dad a high five. Yeah, there you go. He's coming yeah. home from lunch. <laughs> but he hears a noise, does he not? I believe he does. <laughs> and the thing about that noise is he wants to make sure that it isn't one of those rowdy boys. <laughs> Is setting up the premise that they're living in just an awful neighborhood because he makes a reference to not only rowdy boys, but then he goes outside to find that a non-teen, much older young adult named Peter is a, is a scientist of incredible capabilities, just who often, you know, oh, is it the Rowdy Boys? I'm assuming the thing that gets me, and here's what's so f***ed up about this music video. We're just going to go there right now. Peter is unchecked. There does not seem to be any parents in this situation for Peter. He's not quite old enough to own the house. I don't know how he came into a house. It's a little young for him to just be given own property. Good for Peter, I guess, until you learn more about Peter. And do you think this is the first time they noticed Peter doing something of this scientific magnitude, I guess? I mean, it's a fucking time traveling device that he's created in the center cushion of his house. <laughs> like the boys obviously have a green light to go visit Peter because the parents don't say shit. They're just like, yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. Is it either the rowdy boys or Peter, which <laughs> neither is a good scenario in my mind in the least, right? Yeah, they kind of just mosey on over there and find this. See, they say it's a time machine. They also say it's a flux capacitor, which... It's a time-traveling device. Do you have any issues with the science of the song or the, or the I guess, the science fiction, I should say? I don't think it's very sound, uh, <laughs> right? So, first of all, a flux capacitor, uh, I don't think is what create. Is it what created the Well, let's talk time? about the device. It had to be moving at if a certain If you Google the speed. flux capacitor, it's 
like so they obviously were fans of the Back to the Future franchise. Who isn't? Um, I believe it's the device, and I could be wrong. People are going to slam us for this, but I believe it's the numbers that show up on the dash of the DeLorean. It's the actual, you know, it's the computer inside the car that makes makes the car, the DeLorean, able to travel through time when you reach 88 miles per hour or whatever. Well, like Doc, like, fell, hit his head, and saw the shape, that kind of y shape thing, the device that he put into the car, which allows it to time travel. Oh, yeah, you're probably right. I have no idea. I've never even really seen the movies. It's I talk like it's this well-known <laughs> thing. It, it, it totally is. I just have never really even seen it. So um, Biff is a bad guy. Whatever. <laughs> However bored you're at, uh, complain about the show. Nobody, whatever. What I'm trying to say is that they get into the, Peter's house, no last name, Peter, right? Who is not a rowdy boy. He doesn't appear to be a member of the rowdy boy gang. Because had he been, I don't think they would have engaged. You know what I'm saying? Because he's like, if it's the rowdy boys... <laughs> This is going to be a different afternoon for us. We're going to have to go fucking whoop some ass. You know, they go to the garage and grab brass knuckles instead of the instruments, right? It's the rowdy boys. They're coming around. Uh, anyway, they go inside Peter's house. And he's like, oh, I have a flux capacitor. I built it under the cushions of my couch. <laughs> 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 the living group couch. Come on, come on in, teen boys. I'm slightly older than, than thou. Uh, help me get these cushions off this couch. And, you know, this is going to be a totally normal thing. <laughs> I have to like answer the, this question that I already posed. Is this the first time they've been in Peter's house, and is the is this the first time they're witnessing him do scientific things of this like uh, nature or advanced? Uh... I'd ha- I'd I'd say the music video portrays that this is indeed the first time. Mm. But they know him by name, know him as Peter. I guess so. Just kind of that rascal next door always up to something. Okay, so this is the first time they're in his house. I think so. Hopefully, I mean, so they God. just are <laughs> bush bushy tailed and blue eyed. Going in and just, hey, what could go wrong? We're the Jonas <laughs> Brothers, Holson family. There's a bonus Jonas on the way. Let's all just go to Peter's house. And if Peter says take the cushions off the couch, then darn it, we're going to take the cushions off the couch. And then they see this glowing orb in the middle. That's the, that's the device working, right? It creates this uh, void in which you can travel. Yeah, it's more of a portal. Yeah, good point. It is more of a portal. And what <laughs> happens? what happens next? If I remember correctly, Peter just... As soon as they enter the room, dives through the portal, right? And you never see him again. (laughs) (laughs) Peter's out. He's like, good luck in the fucking future. Welcome to my house for the first time. I'm just going to go do my thing. (laughs) Me and the Rowdy Boys have some, uh, have an appointment. We just have, we have to go see a guy about a thing. Uh, Anyway, see you guys. Enjoy the future. Your clothes are going to change. You're going to be wearing matching white button downs with ties and there's gonna be a lot of <laughs> child girls in th- my future version of the house <laughs> nothing weird there definitely not a jail for like there's no trafficking at all like i'm just a super <laughs> just, just your neighborhood peter scientist dude definitely just not story holding picture frames of families like, <laughs> their only job in the year 3000 <laughs> yeah i definitely didn't just capture an army's worth of uh anyway to me, it's actually a fucked up video. It's, it's <laughs> twisted. The, the, the ethics have never been really... I mean, let's just go to the lyrics, shall we? Because it, it's either the low-hanging fruit or the most important part of the whole song. It's <laughs> this part right here, analyzing why there's so many girls that are younger than Peter in the future, future version of Peter's house, uh, a futuristic prison, if you will. And then the lyrics themselves, talking about the infatuation of the Jonas Brothers and who they meet there and the undertones, of course, of the video that we both are discussing at the moment. I, You know, I also think it is staggering how many pop music videos from this era feature the band members just quizzically looking around their environment. <laughs> <laughs> like, was it the click five when the teacher just, like, <laughs> yeah, <I> looked? <laughs> oh, yeah, just kind of that, oh, shit. You know, like, all right, now just be bewildered as hell. Like, it was the same guy directing all of them. And his, <laughs> big, his big direction was, how's this? Uh, more bewildered, more bewildered. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, this is the future, right? Is it 2005? No, that's 3000. It's five years before the Childish Gambino thing, we swear. Uh, okay, so they they meet. Well, one there's one part where the... Guitar player Jonas, who isn't Nick, his, he gets his tie pulled through a screen. So even the <laughs> physics are off. So Nick, or Peter, excuse me, 
Peter not only is storing children in this future, futuristic prison and is a is a criminal of um, a scale unfathomable to like the current mind or justice system. There's the physics of the future house are different, and you can watch. It's kind of Harry Potter esque, but you can join people in the photos they're in. Kind of, it's uh, not to mention everything's underwater. <laughs> 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 Which is, I can't believe we took this long to mention that. Uh, not much has changed except for the fact that they're currently living in an in, in Atlanta sort of state, which is uh, jarring to say the least, I'd imagine. <laughs> Which they should have gone into those futuristic or those old school diving tank suits instead of just sharply dressed, <laughs> like middle school dance sharp or middle school dance casual attire. Well, there, there's a lot of discrepancies in the lyrics here, as you can imagine. And right. should we just go through them? I've been thinking long. Yeah, let's let's go line by line. Okay, let's do it. All right. So these these boys, the Jonas boys, uh, they're, they're brothers, about, Tom. <laughs> the Jonas boys, they're about <laughs> high school age, right? I think in this, yeah, there's seventh seventh to ninth or fifth to ninth, something like that. So right out of the gate, the first line: One day when I came home at lunchtime, who leaves school at lunchtime? I think it's the summer. Uh, okay, so they were out somewhere else. Yeah, playing. They're going to come home. Mrs. Jonas probably has some PBJs or something. Okay, okay, sure. Based on the air embrace in the music video, they have a very good relationship with their mother and right. their father with the high five. <laughs> They're just like, the vibe is strong in the Jonas household, and I am jealous, quite frankly. Because <laughs> not, not only aren't the brothers fighting and hitting each other in the head with brooms, um, which is not, not fun to do with your siblings, and has never happened to me, obviously, Um <laughs> Or cooking uh, uncracked pistachios in the microwave for nine 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 <laughs> stuff. Just <laughs> they're doing this like thing where they play music together and high five their dad and uh, <laughs> hug their mom. There's no pistachios smoking and almost burning the house down. There's just like plenty of normal stuff. Very jealous of the Jonas household for sure. Very wholesome. Very wholesome. <laughs> Dude, I gotta hear the pistachios. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the story. I don't know if I've said it, told it on the show before. No. But the first time I was like alone, babysitting my brother without my sister's help, and my brother was like, my parents were doing the uh, South Beach diet or something, one of the fad diets that they used to do. One of them was big on pistachios, though, big on them. And we found one that wasn't cracked for the first time. We're like, oh, f- I didn't know this could happen. Why would they sell us this nut? And uh, we were like, what do you do? <laughs> like, well, there's hundreds literally in this tub of pistachios that we could just move on to. But I definitely want to eat this one nut for sure. And my brother and I were just thinking hard. And we put it in the microwave. He's like, well, how long? I'm like, as long as it takes. <laughs> <laughs> we, so what's the most? There's only four, you know, things in the machine that the computer recognizes. So we just put nine, 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 ninety nine minutes and ninety nine seconds. An hour and a half. <laughs> it's like a feature length like, film. It's like the Lion King duration of cooking a single nut. We didn't even put a plate. <laughs> it's just rotating so slow. <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then I fall the f- asleep. My brother's just in a chair watching. <laughs> and I wake up to my parents just just making a, a ruckus in the kitchen, obviously, because it's smoking, just bellowing out, sparking at this point. It's down to like 23 minutes. <laughs> Could you even imagine? And the, the thing about it is, <laughs> excuse me. Let me gather myself. It uh, it hadn't cracked at all yet. My brother had fallen asleep in front of the microwave. And there's smoke like he's inhaling the smoke kind of unknowingly at this point because it's bellowing so far out. But he was also sitting so close. Oh, God. Anyway, a little dip. We didn't exactly walk to the garage jovially and start jamming to a pop song. It sounds like you were the rowdy boys. Oh, uh, hey, maybe we were. Maybe down the road, the Jonas Brothers were like, "Don't." We don't. We won't even say their names. We'll just call them the rowdy boys. <laughs> we don't. We don't use. We don't say their names in this house. Oh my god! So, oh god, the Jonas Brothers not <laughs> incinerating <laughs> nuts in the microwave. <laughs> Sorry, huge sidetrack, but I guess the story had to be told on the uh, on the show at some point. Probably oh one of the God. better babysitting stories, but, and the only one. I got fired immediately from that post. So, uh, but yeah, 
we were talking about. We're getting the lyrics. They come home from lunch. I, I, I'm guessing it was the summer. All right. So they hear a funny noise. Yeah. Want to see if it's the ratty boys. This is our neighbor, yeah. Peter. Mm-hmm. So <sighs> this is... <laughs> They look over the fence and they see their neighbor Peter with a flux capacitor just holding it loosely. Uh, and then a portal in the couch opens. Right. Well, t- I mean, does he wave to them or does he just like, like, hey, let's go check it out? Like, does he invite them or do they willingly bum rush Peter at this point? I mean, I guess the portrayal in the video is they see these kind of sparks coming out of a window in the house. Right. There's, a so, there's a commotion of some sort. Right. So they go over to investigate. And uh, it's a flux capacitor, like one in the film he's seen. Maybe can't quite remember the Back to the Future yeah. trilogy at this no, time. Less syllables. They're writing a song. Understandable. Understandable. All right. So uh, they jump through the portal. It's the year 3000. Not much has Peter's changed, house. but they live underwater. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the best. So like, and I, this is an, a real honest take. You think about the sweater song by Weezer, and they're like, "Pull this thread, yeah." Uh, as I walk away, watch me unravel. I'll assume. just like a song about someone ruining a guy's sweater at a party, right? Or maybe it's more, but whatever. You get the point, right? It's just like kind of these irreverent lyrics. To me, the <laughs> I really think it's a dynamic lyric, and I'm not. This is not <laughs> me joking. Nothing's changed, but we live underwater. To me, is one just really funny like i find it very humorous <laughs> and the song is a bop and catchy as is uh, i just are, i guess i have to ask are you a fan of the chorus or are you turned off by the by the underwater stuff i think what was the word you said irreverent um yeah just kind of the nonsensical like oh not much has changed we live underwater i i just i think no, it's i think it's perfect i think it's hilarious yeah. um yeah, you good. know i i do wonder if humans can evolve to have gills in 900 and what was it, 94 years at this point, um, or if they're still on oxygen masks. Yeah, that'd be a uh, bit of a rush job, I Scuba think. situation, <laughs> right? In terms of Darwinism and all, and all, the, and the like. <laughs> all right, so now your great, great, great granddaughter is doing fine. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Do you think they sh- she came up to them or they s- sought her out or like is the great. So here's what's kind of f-ed up about the music video is the first three girls they see at first glance are just identical, like clones, like kind of like the movie Her. No, not the movie Her, the movie. Uh, Ex Machina. Ex Machina, right. It- it's kind of like an Ex Machina situation. It's like, Peter, what the f***? <laughs> like, then it starts to get like kind of horror movie-ish for me. Like... <laughs> Welcome to my lair of robot robot babes. You know, it's like, Peter, this is, no, they make them do, appear older. What the hell is going on, Peter? And uh, I don't know. The great-granddaughter thing is obviously where the ethics come into play, and we haven't really touched on it yet. And I don't know if you even want to go there because it's a low-hanging fruit, but also it's, it's a big part of the song. Well, I want to break down the math behind this. There's a couple things here. I do the math, you know, if if... You're having all the women in the family having babies at 25 years old. A great, great, great granddaughter would be born about 120 years from your birth. So we're missing 874 years here. So either their math is greatly flawed or over this 994 years, the Jonas Brothers have discovered the cure for death. And they have dramatically increased the average life expectancy. I love where you're at, and I love that you did the math. (laughs) Because the great-great-great-granddaughter, I mean, at this point, if Peter is in a garage, think of, like, all the companies that started in garage, Windows, Apple, whatever. Peter, despite his checkered past and tendencies that are criminal and disgusting, and (laughs) I don't know if registries were as widely available back in... It was before that show with Chris Hansen where he asked people to have a seat and all that. <laughs> I have a no, seat. I'm serious. Right. In the neighborhood, he could have just hung out. I think this is pre all that, like people getting good about letting people know who's in the neighborhood and all that stuff. I think that might have been able, we were just exiting the time in the 90s where things were able to get swept under the rug. If he had that type of technology, I think the great, I guess what I'm trying to say is the great, great, great granddaughter 
by the time she was born, she would be a time traveler as well. And does she just catch up with the Jonas Brothers to warn them about something by the time they get there or something like that? Ooh. Like, she doesn't necessarily have to be this innocent person who's living in that time like, oh, God, time travelers? Because if we're, li- if we're seeing the birth of time travel for a civilization, then I'm not sure that by the time we get there, the great-great-great-granddaughter is just going to be like, oh, what? You know what I mean? Like, they're living <laughs> in a world where this is normal as hell. So, if anything, the Jonas Brothers would look like idiots wearing their matching fucking clothes and everything. You know what I'm saying? Okay, no, that makes sense. I just didn't know if... You so know, I, here's my question yeah. to you. Who's saving who? And what the <laughs> f*** is going on in Peter's house? Is she an agent being like, I won't let Peter do this anymore? You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, they might be talking to Peter because they don't know where the f*** he went. Maybe he that's why he disappears, right? Because he's like, they're on to me. Enjoy this. I don't know what's going on. Don't ask any questions when you get there because there's going to be some shit you have questions about. <laughs> You're not going to see me for the rest of the music video. If you run into my great great granddaughter, she's trying to make sure my shit ends now. And you just got to <laughs> pick sides, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it's an action movie that I would definitely watch. <laughs> okay. I like that. I like that a lot. I think we should make an action movie. We should start writing it immediately. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I'm I'm down because I think, honestly... Can you imagine? I'd watch the hell out of that movie. Would it star the Jonas Brothers themselves? Or would it be that on the nose? Or what if we delay the hurling, the Ron Carnage hurling book for some Jonas Brothers fan fiction? You know what, Tom? I would love nothing more than to write Jonas Brothers fan fiction with you, <laughs> especially if it involves bringing Peter to justice, because there is some, again, the ethical flaws in this song and video are, they've gone unreckoned with for too long, and I mean that quite seriously. <laughs> All right, so the next, the second verse. Although, here's a bit of time travel oh. just questioning, right? If you go there, are you working under the assumption that you are the age of the people you're there with now? I mean, that's the main question. Yeah. Let's just do the low-hanging fruit exercise real quick. No, you'd have to be. Yeah. Or would you have to assume that you are like a great, great, great grandpa to everybody? But I feel like if you go to get coffee, everyone there would just have to. Do you respect the time traveler's age as is, or do you assume they're 990, whatever? No, the time tra- – oh, God. yeah, I mean, I guess the time traveler, from the perspective of the person that just came from the year 2006, would only be seconds older. Well, it's it's the back to the future thing, since we're on the right. flux capacitor topic. When he goes back, he's the same age as his own mother, and that's kind of the whole thing, right? So right. there are – obviously, you can get into trouble. I mean, is it – right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you could you could visit your own grave, I'd imagine, right? Ooh, man. I don't know. There's a little. I, I feel like zombie movies and time travel movies have different sets of rules for different ways they want to go about things like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but man, that's tough. Because I mean, if you're talking to someone else's, like Back on the Future, dives right into what could be the worst version of that. Right. You're like, oh, I guess I'm just at a high school thing. I'm playing a show at the talent show. Everything's cool. I'm just in high school. Time travel doesn't have to be that hard if I'm assumed to be the age that I appear. But then he walks out of the, you know, obviously they're almost hooking up with his mom stuff, which is uh, why the great, great, great and daughter stuff would be incredibly <laughs> problematic. And this world Peter's dragging them into. Now I'm starting to wonder if them getting tangled up with the Rowdy Boys might have been the better situation. You know, just getting a quick, <laughs> quick scrap, a few cuts and bruises, nothing wrong there. Now you're in some serious time travel ethical quandaries. So the second verse. Uh, yeah, the second he, verse, right? He took me to the future in the flux thing. And I saw everything. But the thing is, what did he see? He went into his house and jumped into a, a void or a Well, portal. we're, yeah, but the next line is he sees boy bands and another one and another one and another one, which things happened rapidly. Was this song written when NSYNC and Baxter Boys were still like doing their thing? No, it was written in like 2005, 2006. Right. So what the hell were they talking about? Like they made a comeback? Is it prof- so? Here's a note I made. Did they predict K-pop <laughs> in this song? Just like they're gonna make a comeback hard. It's gonna be a little further east than what Insane Backstreet Boys came from, but uh, there's gonna be boy bands, plenty of them. And what I love is that they also hint that Kelly Clarkson is still very famous, who uh, beat them on the charts just barely with their seventh album. I think they make a reference to it <laughs> in, in, in this verse as well. So they make a, a couple bold pop culture claims. After saying they've seen everything, right? Yeah. Uh, this song went multi-platinum. Mm, which it has not, right? No, no. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? It'd be kind of cool if it went gold or something. 
Um, I've done some some looking, and this album, which was an EP of two songs, went gold with like a couple hundred thousand copies. That's pretty but, good. But their next album went multi platinum. It sold almost three million copies, and then their third album went platinum. Really? Yeah. So good for them. They're killing it. Sure. They well, they got four more to go before the year twenty or three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to do like <laughs> math in my head, but the fucking title of the song is the year we're in. <laughs> my apologies to everyone involved, as usual. I am just very sorry. Um, so that's pretty much all the substance in the lyrics that we just went through. Yeah, they they hit the. Um, I mean, there's a bridge right where they. He, no, I was just he said he built a time machine like a one. In the yeah, they they mention the flux capacitor a lot. Yeah, they don't really. You're right. Then then they hit the outro, or they hit the chorus a bunch of times before they fade out. I guess. And there's even like a just claps last, you know, mm-hmm. hoorah, which is uh, again, it's a bop. That's so good, um, man. yeah, how's the music video end? What what they they see the three robot girls that are identical, and then the one brother who is. You know, for whatever, for better or worse, considered to be the least handsome, gets pulled into a painting by his tie or something. I don't know if he even makes it back. Um, well, they all end up back in the garage singing about their experience. So, and they all seem pretty happy. Well, what are your takeaways? I think the Jonas Brothers are just as wrapped up in this ethical dilemma as Peter. They seem very happy with what they've done in the future with women with hair like in Star Wars floating above the floor. <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> but it's water. So like, why wouldn't they float? Is there a floor? Like, <laughs> So it's water inside too. And the fact that they didn't come out, if they're going to do an automatic clothes change when you go through the portal, how is it not, how did Peter not, if he can get this far, make it so that they're in, like, scuba gear, right? Like, why just ties and slacks? You know what I mean? Like, you're going to drown. Did Peter change looking... them upon entry? I... <laughs> <laughs> I Honestly, and I, again, I know I've been, like, way too serious about this the whole episode, but we got to look, like, Peter's, like, there's some stuff going on there. Like, Peter, I don't know how they allowed this to even happen. But um... So here's something I wanted to present to you as the biggest twist in all of the lyrics. Yeah. This is a cover song. The Jonas Brothers did not write this song. I knew it was too much of a bop. Wow. <laughs> you told me before you recorded that... Uh, did Adam Schlesinger write it? <laughs> no, I checked. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there was a British band called Busted that put oh, this no. song out two years before. Oh. And some of the lyrics were changed... Upon entry of the Jonas Brother world, can I recite the changed lyrics to you? Oh, God. Please do. It'll help us crack the case of Peter. Did they right. fabricate Peter? Nope. Peter was there oh. all along. Okay. Because I feel like, real quick, this would be something if the great-granddaughter was coming back in time to check on things and like do the investigation and stop Peter's invention and all that stuff, she would want to look at the British band's original take on the whole telling <laughs> story. So right now I'm envisioning her like at a desk in an old noir detective style thing, <laughs> neon flashing outside. She's like coursing over documents of easy lyrics printed out, A to Z lyrics <laughs> printed out. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right, so I'm going to read you the lyrics from the second verse. Tell me if you can find the subtle difference. This is Busted's version. Boy bands in another one, in another one, in another one. <laughs> Triple-breasted women swim around town totally naked. <laughs> okay, so they're more, they're less uh, back to the future. They're more total recall. Right. 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 So they're more like social commentary. I hate these boy bands because it's earlier 2000s <laughs> and it might be a little more relevant to make a, did, did they mention Kelly Clarkson? That lyric was originally, it had outsold Michael Jackson. Wow. Yeah. Well, they made the song way worse. Now that's baldy. <laughs> wow. I got wow. one more lyric for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. So the main kind of lyric that sticks in your head was originally written, and your great, great, great granddaughter is pretty fine. 
that totally changes the meaning. Wow. Damn it. That was a good find, right? There's still a guy named Peter? Yeah, there's still Peter. Is the great-great-great-granddaughter Peter's granddaughter? Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's an important question. If we're yeah, just going to put a case file together on this thing. Who is in this story? What's the name of that band again? Busted. Busted. So there, theirs is obviously a more... They're I going guess, to the year co- 3000 to party, not bust crimes. <laughs> well, it's not a Disney Channel thing. Like when you... Oh, <laughs> damn it. Wow, good breaking news, Tom. Nice, yeah. nice, turn, of, nice turn of events. I like this, but also I, I'm caught off guard <laughs> by it. I almost texted you before we record. I was like, you know so what? Glad no, you I'm going to hold on to this. So glad you didn't. Okay, so they just wrote like a <laughs> decent social commentary song that, you know, your granddaughter's fine. Michael Jackson, you know, we outsell Michael Jackson living in the year. It, it's a good song. Damn it. I feel bamboozled, quite frankly. <laughs> I did. I should have known that Jonas Brothers, they're like, oh, do they have any other hits? No, they just had this really good one. It's like, of course it wasn't <laughs> theirs. Jesus Christ. I hate this. I hate this. Sh- I hate doing this podcast because we learn too much. You know what I mean? Ignorance is bliss, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Oh, God. Okay. So that song is way cooler for a multitude of reasons. They made it Disney channeled up, but they kept Peter. Those twisted bastards. Well, I'll tell you um, what, man. There was an interview with the singer or the lyricist of from Busted, and he asked, like, how do you feel about the Jonas Brothers kind of taking and warping your song? And he said, quote, dude, they paid my mortgage for, like, three years. I'm hyped. <laughs> wow. We should do an episode on that band. I know. <laughs> we should see if we, we should see if they want to come on. Oh, might. that would be. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, I can hear. Sorry. I can hear myself echoing. Oh, sorry. I was trying to play the, uh, <laughs> that game that children play on long car rides where they say what the other person is saying until oh, they that, get early enough. <laughs> that was you. I thought I was echoing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was ready to be like, something's up with the audio. <laughs> something's up with the audio. No, yeah, I was I was being a child real quick. Sorry. Uh, so it's a cover. That's a mind blower for sure. Good hide. Good good, uh, good work from the co-host on that one. Um, before we wrap this up and get like our final, final thoughts, I do want to say that Zach's hopefully coming back soon. He is computer. He's figuring it out. Um, trying to survive that cold Minneapolis winter. Um. And yeah, we have a, should we pimp the book real quick while we gather our thoughts? Yeah. Uh, By the time this episode goes out, the, so I think I messed up the pre-order of the paperback version. I think you can just buy it now. (laughs) Like I didn't see an option (laughs) for pre-order. There's a glitch. Just go (laughs) buy it. (laughs) So yeah, I think the paperback version What should people do if they don't have a Kindle? just available um uh you can download the kindle app for ios or is it Android. free it's free yeah oh it's free huh well then how much is the ebook version of ron carnage the, Ooh, the ebook is currently a dollar 99 for launch week it's going to go up to 2.99 oh 2.99 and Ooh, yeah two nine, might deal. even make go up to 3.99 if you're uh you could get yourself a filet of fish with that dollar you save <laughs> I think um, I we're going to try to get the book down to $10 for launch week, the physical version. We just got to figure out how, right? Yeah. Oh my God, dude. I was up last night. I literally shed tears over the formatting of this book. Um, mm. Yeah. You were working hard. I was Tom's until... self-employed now, by the way, if we're going to go to the old version of the show real quick, Tom <laughs> just doesn't work for anybody but himself right now, which is nice. Yeah. Last Friday was my last day at Tesla and congratulations, I'm, old boy. I'm thank you. Old boy. My, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, it feels unreal. I've it's been a very emotional couple of days. It feels um, like someone else's life, like someone who is much luckier than me. Um, I just like have to keep like stepping back to be like, dude, like you did this, you worked your ass off for this, and it's just gonna <laughs> become more right. work. This this first week's been hard, but uh, yeah. Well, well it has funny, because huh? I'm gonna be out of town in Florida at a podcast expo, so I'm missing three days of work trying to do the book, have a couple of album reviews to put out, which is why I was up until like four in the morning last night, and it's gonna be probably similar tonight. Oh, you, dude, you launched your other pod, right? Yeah, I have a third podcast now called Podcast Me Anything. I don't think any of our listeners are podcasters, but it's kind of a 
Q and A podcast where uh, industry professionals such as myself answer podcast related questions about the industry. Well, and, you should uh, all check it out, or yeah. at least subscribe and never listen. Just you know, give them a subscribe at least. Don't forget to ring that bell and smash that like button. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, I don't think we've ever asked anybody to su- subscribe to the show, which either means we're doing this really wrong or the most <laughs> right ever. But <laughs> the verbs they use are comical to say the least. Why don't you smash the f*** out of your... Take your thumb and try to break your phone. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's just everything's been super dope, man. Um, Really busy, but after the book comes out, everything's going to, you know, go back to a normal routine. And Now that we're here, should we do a quick... uh book by the way everybody feel free to skip this or whatever there's no nothing else to talk about peter's creepy the song was a cover it's a hoax <laughs> who cares jonas brothers are famous again they're back they're coming out with another album we'll probably review it maybe we won't it depends how well this one does but we're just gonna self indulge for a bit so have a nice week if you don't want to listen to it and uh we love you very much and tweet at us under at underscore reminiscent fm if you want to request a band or song or music video uh from the early 2000s in which you'd like us to discuss uh, that which he likes to discuss. Um, we're neither of those. I'm, I'm, it's hard to say. But <laughs> next week we're going to have a very special guest. I'm not going to say who it is yet, mm. but um, it's on par with it was the very lovely uh, Bill of the Hard Times, who was nice enough to come on. That was our first foray into having guests on once a month, uh, just to kind of up the game a little bit, right? Sure. And uh, that should be really fun. We're going to talk about... Uh, kind of a few, well, you'll just have to see, I guess. It's going to be fun. We're, <laughs> we're trying this whole thing where we kind of cold call people and message and see who's willing to just do this. And that part has been kind of weirdly fun and very nerve wracking, but it's <laughs> y- yielded some interesting results to say the least. So yeah. we're going to keep that up and try to keep, the, keep it interesting. Anyway, thanks for joining us for the Jonas Brothers Year 3000 episode. Tom and I are going to keep talking, I'm pretty sure, for at yeah. least another five to ten on sure. this whole topic. So uh, anyway, thanks everybody. And Tom, I forget where we were. Um, I'm self-employed. Uh, the book. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah, the book. Ed, let's do the exit interview real quick. Sure. Are you happy with it? Like, are you proud? Are you scared? What's going on? We're a week out from the actual release. Um, I I only feel scared that I might have missed something that doesn't make There's sense. There's going to be something. Or, yeah. Are you going to feel good when one person that isn't somebody inside our circle reaches out and says, yo, this is Loki kind of funny? Or like, <laughs> what, do, what do you really need out of this? I I really just feel like I want something that I'm a part of to like hit big. Just, to, I don't know, validate my effort or validate like my taste. Be like, oh, other people like it too. Um, I, you know, I, I want it to be a cult classic, but just knowing that like from being in a band that was never super successful, we had maybe two or three people like find me on Facebook and be like, yo, this thing actually meant something to me. And like, that was only two or three people. And that still fills my heart. Does it? Okay. Yeah. If that happens with this, will you feel the same or still kind of, so here's kind of the artist's conundrum, right? I mean is it ever enough or you know what I mean? Like you always say like the, the quote that sounds nice in an interview, like, well, if it changes one person's this or that, then it should be enough on paper. Right. I think that's what you're supposed to say though. You know, Yeah, but I'm saying like in reality, it's like, no, I I would love like a fat check. If someone swept (laughs) in and was like, I just want to buy the rights to this and you can sell out immediately. Like, yes, please. (laughs) I don't want to work. You know, like, I would love to sell out. Like, I don't care who, you know, but is that secretly, is that the other end of the spectrum going too far or, or what's the mood? Um, you know, I, I never. What if somebody swept in with like not even that much money, like $12,000? I mean, like in terms of generational wealth and was like, I'm going to buy Ron Carnage right now, the rights to fucking the whole universe, 12,000 bucks. You have to split it between the two of you and you never get to like, right. You have to make up a whole new thing. If you want it, would you take that deal? No, I'd say 3000 each and 30% ownership. Ooh, you got to get that slice. Good. Yeah. Smart. Just in That's case. That's why you're man. the business manager. Just in case. But no, I've like, this is going to sound so corny. Like I've never thought about the money. Um, but 
I don't know. Like, I feel like there was a disconnect of like, I want millions of adoring fans, which to me, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know if that's just like super vain. Like I haven't thought about like, I want to make money off of it. It's like, I want fame and recognition from it. I don't know. Like I, I just want people to like enjoy it. And if like, you know, this book might probably takes, I don't know, five hours, four or five hours to read. Um, if it was a nice break in someone's life, so just to escape to this weird world, that's really funny. And they get a few laughs and forget about how hard life can be sometimes like that would mean the world to me, but I, you know, it's not just like, Oh, if one person, no, I want like, a f-ing, I want that for a million people, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I haven't considered money. I always expect to never recoup anything on a creative endeavor. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. We'll see. What about you? Well, as a special consultant to the Elemental FM network that is now defunct, um, I yeah. expect nothing from this. It's been an interesting ride to just talk to you every week, uh, which has been strange that so many people listen because yeah. it's just you and I chatting about stuff that is utterly ridiculously stupid. Uh, <laughs> this is a this week's a fantastic example of that, uh, and uh, it couldn't be more fun. And then I guess I'd have to say that I'd like to wind up pretty soon because we're getting a little preachy. We don't want to go right back to what we were doing immediately before. But we got a good episode this week, I feel like. That was really fun. Um, What do I want? Money. (laughs) 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 I want to get a new car, man. My car sucks. It's a... but I'm almost weirdly more determined to drive it into the ground. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I want to make it to 200,000 miles. I'm only at like 90. It's like an 05 Elantra. It's only at 90,000 somehow. Yeah, anyway, that's neither here nor there. No, that's insane. I have a 2011 that's at 95,000 miles and everything is starting to break on it. <laughs> There's like a difference between mileage and like just gravity plus time <laughs> it's like uh you take it to the shop they're like yeah you know you need a new radiator also kind of the whole thing's coming down <laughs> like oh okay <laughs> not exactly a classic you know what i mean so uh anyway that'd be cool so uh you heard it uh El- do we have a name for the fans Aaron's? the errands the errands okay we were copying off of uh hello internet right a little right bit on that one <laughs> the tims right uh by the way, I guess we should say, I don't know if you ever said this, but Aaron Matthew Matthews, the name, the pen name for the book. Yes. Because, uh, again, it didn't really come from an author. It was just a, some old jokes from your old company, but is named after our first two listeners, Matthew, who is a Canadian fan of ours, and Aaron, who is <laughs> on stateside. So uh, our first two listeners uh, got the pen name uh, certification, of course. And, uh, yeah. It's pretty it's, incredible. Yeah, kind of homage, right? Us trying to thank them a little bit. Pretty cool. Anyway, yeah. we should probably wrap this up, right? Well, let's give a song of the week and then get out of here. Oh, that's a good point. I forgot that we were actually still doing the show because I was just having fun talking to you, which is kind of the whole <laughs> thing. But John, John, John. I'm going to give you Garden in the Bones by Periphery. Um, I kind of explained what happened last week, but I... Yeah, w- walk us through it again for those who didn't... Oh, by the way, last week, you should go listen to it. Tom read the first six chapters of the book. Uh and it's interesting. We were determined, Tom was determined to put out an episode, even though we had kind of loose plans to interview the drummer of Periphery, or the lead the singer. The singer. Yeah. And talk to us a little bit, just a brief recap of your Vegas trip. Um, I mean, I had a really good time. I ended up hanging out with the founding member and former drummer of Creed. Mm, <laughs> wow. Um, a drummer for Blue Man Group. And my Whoa. buddy Spencer, the singer of Periphery, and ate Wagyu beef. <laughs> What's that? Talk me through Wagyu beef and what the f***. Um, like a five ounce strip was $140. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, it's like steak, but it melts like butter in your mouth. It was out of this world. How um, do they raise that particular animal? I have no idea. I don't even want to look into the ethics of it. Okay, um, cool. Well, we don't have to go there. But I didn't pay for the meal, which was incredible. Um, and then I got to basically You got that listen. Creed money? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, special. Shout out to Creed. We should do a Creed episode. Runs deep. I feel like it's a crime that we haven't yet. We honestly. have. It was episode three, which ended up being episode negative one. It never aired. And I still Whoa. have it on my hard drive. 
Um, we talked about Creed at length. We did. It was a three-hour episode <laughs> that never saw the light of day. <laughs> well, maybe we should do it again and include bits of it or something. Okay. That sounds fun. But yeah, it, we had a really good time listening to the Periphery album, which is coming out in April. It's Is it good? D- oh, my God. Like I liked Periphery before, but I love this album. So you expect to talk to him in April when the album's going to drop? Yeah. So like after a really fun, pretty actually mellow night in Vegas, um, the actual interview just kind of fell through last minute. So I came home without one. But yeah, we're going to talk in April when the album is officially out. So that's kind of getting postponed to middle of April. Was it worth worth going down there still? Uh, <laughs> that beef sounds worth it. It was a lot of money, but I had fun. You know, I made this little video of Gene who in the book, Ron Carnage, he spent some time in Vegas. So Mm -hmm. um, I took him around, got some photos with some really horrible Elvis impersonators. Uh, Some showgirls ripped me off. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Just, oh God, just a guy out there doing it, man. And the fact that he bugged you for the tip was, oh God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listened to the episode with, uh, I was grinning ear to ear the whole (laughs) Just these people just like ripping the tips out of your pockets practically. (laughs) Like there's a fine line between mugging and what happened with you and those people. (laughs) And uh, they definitely stomped right on it, so... (laughs) Um, yeah, it was it was good. I mean, I I did have a lot of fun, and it it sounded like fun. I was jealous I couldn't get to be there. I mean, it always feels like fun and super adult to travel alone, rent a car. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. You get to play like a different version of yourself for a couple of days, and then right. you get lost in it. And you're like, I don't have any stable ground in this at all. And now it's kind of <laughs> actually scary because am I going to be able to sleep? And do I have to like anyway, whatever. Yeah, uh, we don't have to give into that. Whatever. My song of the week. Uh, Jenny Lewis, Red Bull and Hennessy. Um, I think it was a single that was teased off of her new upcoming album, which, uh, again, if I'm wrong about the fact that it's either out or not out yet, I apologize, but I believe she dropped that one early. Um, I don't really want to talk about Weezer's Black album yet. I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> and uh, that's either not necessarily good or bad. I just give me some time. Okay. <laughs> I don't I don't want to do that right now. So Jenny Lewis, Red Bull and Hennessy, she is just the best. She's the greatest. I, I really... Loved her, uh, oh, I forget the name of the album, but she wore a rainbow white cowboy kind of leather suit, Evil Knievel type thing, and, uh, or no, maybe it was more leathery. Anyway, neither here nor there. She's a gem. Love her. Rilo Kylie was dope too, so. Cool beans. Um, looks like we're going to have a Taylor Swift song here pretty soon. Her subreddit is exploding with fan theories. We are the Taylor Swift pod as it. It, what sucks, what what I hate about everything, really, the internet culture, all of it, is we'll even do a Taylor Swift episode where we don't try that hard. We just, like, are doing a gift to ourselves, and it does way better than, than, <laughs> than anything everything else. we just put The fact that it has to, most anything has to be searchable in nature, you know, you do. Anyway, I'd still like to keep grinding it out with you on stuff that doesn't really matter, because that's what's most fun, but... Right. Uh, <laughs> Now that we've become kind of a Taylor Swift pod of sorts, I guess we'll have to cover it when it happens. And I wouldn't mind doing that either because I'm a big fan of hers as well. So Honestly, uh, I thought about, and like this is no joke at all, just starting a Taylor Swift podcast and just having four podcasts. Yeah, well, I'd love to join your partner, but I know. I, I just barely enough time in the week as is. <laughs> I know. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out. Well, right. I'll see, when we move to North Carolina together, it'll all get, uh, it'll right. all get sorted. Sounds good, brother. Well, let's wrap it up. Oh, brother. <laughs> brother! How do you oh, feel to record the tips? Oh, brother. I feel so close to you right now. I'm quoting that. I only listen to music that's in phone commercials. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. I love you, man. <sighs> when I left. Okay. Bye, man. Love you. Thank you, everyone, for listening, as always. Who knew the Jonas Brothers could put out such a bop? But, of course, it wasn't theirs to give. Tweet at us at underscore reminiscent FM. Let us know what your favorite Jonas Brothers song is, if there are any others. And thank you, everyone who have been here for my journey to being self-employed. It feels amazing. I love you all. Talk to you next week. <laughs>